The Battle of the Bulge. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to Call to Arms Gates of Hell Ostfront Liberation DLC. The developers have sent me over this game a little early and have given me permission to showcase some of the missions from this game. By now, it's probably been released, the DLC itself. And uh, so there's only a bit of content available that I can showcase, mostly this, a six-mission uh, campaign, I guess, uh, showcase from the Germans' perspective all the way from the beginning of the Normandy invasions at St. Lo all the way to, I think, the Battle of the Ruhr. And uh, this, of course, the defensive part of the Battle of the Bulge. The Germans' offensive in the Ardennes has failed, and now they're setting up defensive positions in some of the areas in which they have claimed and want to hold on to. Now, of course, this DLC features a lot of new stuff for the Germans on the Western Front and also, of course, uh, the Americans, too. And uh, it's been quite fun so far. I've just completed some of the uh, missions for the um, Conquest mode, uh, which does feature the Americans and the Germans, if you like. And uh, you can play as pretty much all the factions here from both uh, Finland and um, Germany, the Soviet Union, whatnot, in the Conquest mode. And the Americans will have that as well. That way you can uh, basically go all the way from D-Day all the way to uh, what you could kind of picture to be maybe the Battle at the Rhine or getting very close to Berlin, that type of thing. All right, so the Americans are arriving in a few minutes. We're going to go ahead and slow down time here. We've already set up defensive positions. Luckily, we have AT guns everywhere, more than likely pack 40s One of the things that will be super useful here is Panzer Foss and Panzer Shreks, if we have them. The Panzer Faust are really effective against enemy tanks especially at a very close range, mostly like if the enemy tanks drive by us and they don't see us and we're able to, uh, you know, get a shot into the side of a tank or a turret or something like that, it's incredibly effective. So we're going to go ahead and put our medics and everyone where we can. Now uh, let's see if we have engineering troops. We do. Now this is my first time playing this mission and, um, you know, typically with a first time mission, it's really fun to kind of just experience the mission. And like just, you know, play it out on like a normal difficulty and then up the difficulty with different types of settings. Now, right now, we're uh, playing with the settings of uh, a defensive build. Right before the mission, you can select whether or not you want a, a defensive uh, doctrine where you can bring different units that are more focused on uh, building defenses or, um, you know, defensive guns, large AT like Flak 88s and the like. And then, of course, mortars and machine guns. Or you can go offensive, which may give you access to like Panthers and... Um, you know, maybe like uh, tigers and things like that later in the battle. Oh, I see a trench actually dug out here. Great. Or I was going to build one. Now, this is interesting. This DLC features a lot of snow like this where there's a lot of snow gathered by fence lines, which is interesting because it's not necessarily good cover. It's literally just snow. But also, it's kind of like difficult to shoot through. So it's really hard to place your troops around that. And I believe there's some probably some missions coming for the Americans for like the Battle of Foy and other locations like that. This DLC has actually made me want to go watch Band of Brothers all over again and see what missions are available. Now, the, at this moment, the American campaign remains a mystery to me as to what they have planned for that. But in addition to the conquest mode, being able to play as the Germans uh, against the Americans or the Americans against the Germans and these six new German-focused missions and the American campaign, uh, there's a lot of great stuff here. So props to the devs for continuously putting out uh, new content for the game. And, of course, new DLCs, which mod makers can then use like crazy in order to make all sorts of uh, fun missions that we've never seen before. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight AT, grenade, or AT mines there. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm basically trying to prepare as much as I can. We've only got a few minutes to do all this. Very limited time. Uh, I think, actually, more than mines. Damn, I'd love to build trenches instead, but... Yeah, we really don't get a lot of time to set up defenses in this game at all. Uh, there's a frozen creek here. Oh, there's some trenches there, too. This is why it's actually worth it to play these missions a few times, because um, you don't actually know where all the defenses are. When you've got, like, three minutes to set up for the battle, even if you go on slow, you might miss a, uh, you know, like, for example, we got a few units here at our starting point. There could be machine guns here that I'm going to miss. Um, all sorts of stuff. That guy a machine gunner? Oh yeah, we got ourselves the Folsom Jaeger here as well. So we got paratroopers on the line. Uh, we've got some transport trucks here. I guess this would be good for maybe bringing AT guns around, but everything's pretty much locked in for now. Uh, there's not too much I think we're going to want to move. We've got mortars here and here and AT guns around as well. More than likely machine guns and maybe 20 millimeters too. 
They're all cool. Go ahead and split up our troops here. Yeah, it looks like everybody else is on AT mines and or AP mines. Anti-personnel, anti-tank mines. Oh, some of our soldiers actually have nine AT mines. Interesting. There's another trench. These are perfect for Panzer Faust and Panzer Shreks if we have them. Uh, but we're very limited on our infantry, so I basically moved this group over here. Some of them have uh, Panzer Faust. Yep. Very cool. Panzer Faust are incredible in this game because, of course, you know, the, as the Germans use them, it's kind of a fire and forget, one and done uh, disposable weapon that's just incredibly effective. And, um,. Wow, even some of the troops on the damn AT gun have that. I should I should probably pull that guy off that uh, off the gun here. There we go. But yeah, the great thing here is that it's just, you know, anybody like a rifleman, an SMG gunner, anybody like that can use that. And, um, you know, the Volkstrom is featured in one of the later missions, too, for the battle at the Ruhr. You're actually required to, like, go recruit uh, civilians and whatnot. And I think equip them. I haven't yet necessarily played all the missions yet, but... I am happy to say that there is a ton of content here, and I'm really happy to see it, especially on this Western Front that we've been waiting for for a long time for the Americans. Oh, we're actually digging a trench there already. Go ahead and dig, dig another trench here. This would be good to get some crossfire on the Americans from this corner. This is a large area here they could approach from. Uh, they might mostly approach from up here and then cut down this road, and very likely they could come from over here too. The game likes to kind of... Focus all of your units on like the p almost pointing more north and then hit you from the west, that kind of thing. That's one thing I've been feeling from the DLC a lot. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, no matter whether or not you're a veteran player or a new player, this is a fantastic game for everybody. The base game is on sale on Steam for the autumn uh, sale. However, that probably is coming to an end sometime in early December. So, you know, get it while it's hot. And I had been reporting recently that you need the original Call to Arms to be able to play Call to Arms Gates of Hell Ostfront, and that is no longer the case. So you can now just buy, according to you guys have told me that you can buy Call to Arms Gates of Hell Ostfront, and then the DLC is separate of Call to Arms. However, I must say I really, truly recommend uh, Call to Arms as well. It's a more modern uh, Men of War or a Call to Arms. So if you like this World War II action, that one's more uh, modern warfare with modern vehicles and such, but a little bit more fantasy, like uh, fa like non-existent factions, but they simulate factions from real life um, or alliances and things like that. And it's certainly a uh, very fun uh, game for sure with lots of good missions and lots of good mods. We have ourselves a, uh, what is this? A yeah, FG-42. We'll kind of keep that over here. Trying to split our troops up into, I'm trying to keep like a rifleman, a Panzerfaust and a, um, like a like an MG, tr trying to keep those all together so that we can have some sort of base of fire here. We actually have a machine gun here too, on the elevated position. This game is ridiculously gorgeous as well. Honestly, you could play this in first person and almost convince somebody that it was like a older, you know, it certainly looks like maybe a, a high res version of an old Call of Duty game, uh, or maybe Medal of Honor or something like that. Nah, more Call of Duty, but. Um, yeah, a shame about that new Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign, huh? I do love the Men of War Assault Squad community, though, and all the mod makers who are insane, who have brought us things like uh, mods for Men of War Assault Squad that did recreate, literally recreate the Men of War, uh, in Men of War Assault Squad 2, the uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign, and uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and 3, and I'm thoroughly impressed by the community contributions here, so I'm very much looking forward what they do at right, four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen four, fifteen sixteen ap mines there one thing i'm wondering for this game is if they will put in ice where it can actually be broken uh there's like a little bit of a creek here where the obviously the americans can advance all along this line It'd be interesting to see if there's a way to blow up the ice so it could sink tanks but uh six seven eight nine 12, 13, 16. All right. Yeah, I got to count that out. Uh, if you, you can place the mines in kind of like a long line, there is a way where it'll automatically do that, but I, I never trust that. I've always set mine up. It's always worked for me just to do it that way. So, you know, each their own when it comes to laying mines. One, two, seven, nine. 
I have some other tutorials too, by the way, if you're new to the game uh, for how to set up defenses in both this and like uh, Men of War Assault Squad and other stuff like that. So if you are getting any of those games and you'd like some help on some of these missions, which I think are just stellar, I really am. Multiplayer is a lot of fun. The conquest mode with another player doing it cooperatively is very fun too. Um, you know, and, and like fighting against everyone and the, the community is very good uh, to do you know, multiplayer battles and stuff, but I think this game just absolutely shines with its single-player stuff. And some of the mod makers who used to make mods for Metal War Assault Squad have been recruited uh, by this company in order to design some of these missions and add some features like what I mentioned earlier about uh, the, um, you know, selecting of the build or like your, your doctrine at the start of the battle, what units you may get for reinforcements or what you may start with. And so the devs have made all the right moves in, like, reaching out to the community, hiring those folks uh, to advise or to design or to plan missions or contribute somehow. And that's just beautiful. I mean, that is one of the things that uh, developers almost rarely... I, I think that's a decision that rarely ever bites them in the rear end. Um, I think when they can identify a very talented and passionate group within the community who are willing to... You know, positively contribute and give the constructive feedback instead of just, you know, sling insults and be negative all the time. That's when things really get done. Looking at, for example, City Skylines 2, I think, of course, there's, uh, uh, if you've heard about that, oh boy. Um, but that's a game I think that will get better in time after a few years, just like how City Skylines 1 had time to grow. Uh, City Skylines 1, of course, had lots of mods in a community that eventually uh, gave way to... Uh, community contributions where there would then be paid like a uh, content creator people who made assets for the game uh, in there so I and I think that would be something great from this game too although I feel like people would just willingly advise on things and uh, want to make good DLC so that way we can get some more damn good RTS games so if you've watched this far into the video make sure you do subscribe so you can see more of this and many other World War II games on the channel and, of course, also smash like so more people can find it. If you're not into my style of gameplay, that's totally fine. But please do look for other uh, Metal War Assault Squad and Call to Arms creators and or mod makers who put up uh, videos of their mods, too, if you're really interested in this game. And, uh, you know, the community is great. There's uh, incredible uh, people out there who are endlessly talented. And uh, I think this dev has done a good job of bringing those people on board and or and listening to feedback from some of their first DLCs, which people felt were... Uh, Scorched Earth was a little lacking, uh, but focused more on the Eastern Front. People wanted more um, other locations, so that's why Finland came along, and now we have uh, the Americans. And hopefully, maybe we'll get the British in North Africa. We'll get a whole new uh, biome, essentially, and also a whole new faction. And maybe eventually we'll get the Japanese and the U.S. Marines. You know, there's many di different ways they could go. And, hell, it doesn't have to be a major faction. Finland, um, you know, not a major faction but was a like there's a, a lot of history there between the uh winter war the lapland war and the continuation war i mean that you can't you can't overlook the historical significance there in just a short in a small area in a short uh, period of time so hopefully we get things for like italy you know say whatever say whatever you want there but i think it's really interesting to see those locations factions and uh units and especially from some mods for example from like for i think it was uh can't recall who exactly made an Italian mod, but there were, you know, the Italians in like Stalingrad and whatnot. A lot of things I didn't even know. So just playing these missions and stuff within, you know, I was today years old when I learned that. It was a couple of years ago, but you get what I mean. Oh, there's a box hole there we can use. All right. So a minute and 29 seconds until the Americans arrive. Uh, they're going to be counterattacking, of course, after the Germans failed offensive at the Ardennes. And we're going to continuously still build more trenches. We may possibly get some reinforcements, so I want to build uh, some trenches behind. And maybe in front, too. Are we building a trench over here somewhere? Oftentimes, I build more trenches than I do... Um, I build more trenches than I do put down... Uh, like, then I have troops, so that can oftentimes be a problem. Let's try to put some mines up here, maybe. A minute might not be enough time for him to place those. All right, for engineers who no longer have mines, we can, can we can bring those engineers back to the trucks and keep on mining, but uh, uh, typically that doesn't work out. Well, look at this spread. This is good. Thanksgiving Day Feast of Pain. 
Another great thing is playing as the different factions, too, helps you to learn both of their tactics. So for anybody wondering again why I'm continuously playing as Germany, just remember that I do want to play the American missions and campaign. Currently, the developers have not uploaded that as the final version. We are technically looking at kind of a preview version with some of the stuff here for Liberation. But I did see that literally in the uh, unit overview, there are 25 different variants of the Sherman. 25 different variants. That means like, you know, there's uh, your standard like DV Sherman. Then there's a Sherman with a little bit of armor added. And then there's slight changes here and there. Where then eventually like a 50 cals added. Or, you know, you go up to like the 76 millimeter. And then there's like six different versions of the, of the 76 millimeter uh, Sherman as well. It's, it's insane. It's insane the amount of uh, content that is in here. Not as if like the developers just came up with this stuff. But like it literally putting in tanks because of historical... Uh, value where the allies thought that they would be useful for whichever reason for each different purpose. It's very interesting. I don't want to put too many troops into the same trench. We're going to try to put maybe a couple guys here. I think within one minute here, and again, if you want to slow down time, just hit backspace in order to do that. And I feel like that's more than fair to you know, give the orders of getting everybody to do what they're supposed to do. I don't know where the hell to put a sniper, really. Maybe I'll put him in this tree line here. Like that. Is that a machine gun? Ah, MG42? Yeah, MG42 there. Yeah, every second counts when it comes to these defenses. You At least you want to get every soldier you can inside of a trench. But you can always keep some in reserve for when enemy artillery wipes them out. So I think we'll keep a few troops back here on purpose for reserve. In my experience, it just seems to be... Better to, you know, put some of your troops in trenches and then keep some of them back. So maybe that's what we'll do here is keep a few of these guys back. We'll give them foxholes so they can hide from enemy mortars and artillery and then bring them up to the front line if it went. Great thing that the uh, developers have made it so each of the individual soldiers, for the most part, do have uh, a kit in order to dig in. Now, another thing, too, is that when this timer reaches zero, the Americans will spawn more than likely on the edge of the map and will take time to drive down these roads. So it's not like, you know, once the battle begins, they're immediately on us. We will have an extra minute or two to prepare defenses and set up blocking positions. And I will attempt to try to bring some troops back to continuously lay mines. That... French there should be dug out soon. I'll make sure most of our vehicles are abandoned. So we have no tank support at all here. We've got, what, pack 40s dug in along the line. Those will be good against Shermans. I think we have what looks to be maybe four to six of those guns. And one way up here, which makes me very nervous that the Americans are going to get very close, and that's going to be our last stand. All right, more trenches being dug. Quite a few troops here, but I'm hoping that the Americans... Um, don't necessarily get that close. Take these guys over here and maybe put them into a uh, trench. I mean, uh, into the, uh, well, making minefields. Get them out of the trench. And some troops should stay on the front line, even though they have, even though they're engineers. He's here too. All right, well, I'm happy to see a mission where everything's under our control. There's been a lot of missions so far where uh, some troops are under AI control, and it's obnoxious that, you know, one soldier with a rifle in this game can make a difference if they're positioned correctly, and sometimes the AI will just, if they're under, friendly troops are under AI control, they'll just kind of walk out in front of a machine gun. It's like, well, they could have definitely gotten some kills in this bunker or this trench that I built, but, oh well. Okay, these guys are going to go down here. Done a pretty good job of trying to get these troops where they should go. There used to be a way to put troops inside of trees in Men of War Assault Squad 2. I don't think that's the case anymore. And uh, I guess we could put a soldier here inside of a window. Not all windows seem to be enterable, and not all buildings seem to be easily occupied or garrisoned. Um, I think there could be a little bit of work on that for 
placing a machine gun or whatnot. I think uh, Company Heroes does it very well where when you have a machine gun squad enter a building, it can almost go to like, you know, two sides of the buildings or four corners, depending on how the building's designed, in order to then provide fire from one side to the other. And uh, I think it's a really good machine gun system. Okay, we got two medics here. I think we should probably bring a medic to the other side. And the Americans should be approaching. With that, we'll go ahead and speed up time. Oh, and here comes the artillery. And the American artillery is falling near the creek. It'll take some time for these guys to get AT mines again. Like he has two. Should be able to carry more than that. Well, just like I said, we'll get a little extra time to prepare, but unfortunately that artillery is kind of a creeping barrage, it looks like. Wow, look at that. Knocking down all the trees. Seems like we're okay. If we placed a lot of mines out there like we did, some of them could be detonated by those barrages as well. Let's dig another big O trench. Try to set up some last stand positions. Some of these guys are not being resupplied with as many AT mines and such as I thought they would. Oh, now they are. I see even more trenches here. But that's alright, we dug our own line. That's a little bit more comprehensive. Americans are still pounding the line for like another uh, good minute here. We still have plenty of time. Well, they've certainly blown apart the entire forest. That'll make easy uh, room for their tanks to advance. We can now see some of the kill zones. The, uh, they improved our line of fire, stupid Americans. Well, I think that's meant so their tanks can blitz right through. There's the tanks. Okay, our first look at the American forces here. M8 Greyhound loaded up with troops. Another one. Going for a little bit of their own blitz. Pack 40. Hitting one of the uh, M8s. Oh, yeah. And there's another entry point here on the left with a Stuart M5A1 pulling up. More of them. No artillery for us, unfortunately. Hopefully the uh, artillery guns are able to kill them up here. MGs are firing off. I think we'll have to move some of this ammo down here. Get some of these troops to move the Kettenkrad down. Oh, it's an engineer variant.
These are supply trucks. It seems to be more wise to move the troops back to these supply trucks. But we can move the su uh, supply truck a little closer to the front line. We're going to have to work on logistics now for a little bit. Those were the main scout forces. I wonder what the Americans will serve us up with next. Actually, to put a supply truck up here by our AT and mortars might be a good idea. AT gun only has 12 ammo, so we, ne we definitely need to give that supply. Any other troops can come back for ammo there as they need. But yeah, remember to keep your uh, AT position supplied. We were down to 12, now we're going back up. Great AT position. I think we got a man down. We've only had a few dead and wounded. Oh no. We're getting bombed by airburst artillery. Oh my god. Wow. Deleting the entire left flank. Get that medic down. Where's that other medic? other medic over here too we got a mess we got a messer schmidt right over here <laughs> all right let's get these guys healed up if we can fortunately our machine gunner there died another wave on the left flank The medics are back up. Now this guy unfortunately seems to be stuck under the ground. There we go. Got to grab another truck for that mortar. Mortar is very effective here. Wow. They're just getting wrecked. Yeah, the mortar needs supply on the left flank. Down to just 10 rounds. All right, what else do we have? Infantry, yeah, the engineering truck too. All right, so that engineer in red should be for these troops, I think. Not one of those was an engineering truck. For the engineers to resupply, but not the case. Pull those engineers back. Got to be attacked at the right flank at some point. Let's pull back up the hill. Okay. Order should now have supplies. So we'll see it go from, yep, six to seven to eight. Yep. So good. The lull in the action is a good opportunity for us to reload. Resupply a thousand rounds there. That'll last for a little bit. Now, these trucks may have weapons inside of them, too. That's one thing not to overlook. So it can be hard not to do uh, overlook while you're in the heat of battle. 
so much to manage. We could also go capture enemy tanks, but probably not a, a, a lot of time to do that. Repair kits and fuel. Fuel cans. And a machine gun. American pushes have been wiped out so far. We could reposition this AT gun. Your vehicles? No, just just my imagination or the wind. I believe some of these engineers can also dig out a gun trench for us. Coastal emplacement. We could build like a tank trench and put an AT gun in it, but it might be too deep to where the gun won't be able to fire over the edge of the tank trench. Uh oh, right side's gonna get hit now. Oh, damn. All right, let's switch our medics to the right side. We know there's going to be fun over there. Okay, so here's what I'm imagining. Two attacks on the left, two attacks on the right, and then we'll get attacked from both sides simultaneously. Move our AT gun. Okay, this would be good to get a truck going for. Well, attacking from the same side. All right, whatever. Change of plans again then. <laughs> what is it that they say? No battle plan survives contact with the enemy. You come up with a plan and then immediately have to change it. There's a quote-unquote plan. Hey, is that a chaffy? Look at that. That's a phenomenal tank. It's almost like a, uh, for me, it just it's like a Panzer III in my mind with, like, the power of a Panzer IV. Size of a Panzer III, power of a Panzer IV for the Americans. Very good uh, piece of kit right there. Good, good little collector's item. See if we can save that guy. I'm gonna switch medics back to the left. Uh oh. AT guns almost in position. Then take the loss. Not enough. Uh, seventeen rounds. Okay. Range of this is probably two hundred and fifty. We build emplacements. I click vehicle sandbags. Okay. It would be nice to see some sort of an animation or a confirmation to know that that's actually put down some sort of defense. Eventually, these MGs are going to have to come back for ammo. Down to about 200 rounds there. MG come back now. AT gun, go ahead and repair.
The third attack now from the Americans and just kind of a... Like an escalating, hey, what's over here? Like they just keep sending bigger stuff but not really reacting to what we're doing. Eventually we're going to run out of supply. This is going to suck. Okay. Oh yeah, and these guys are equipped with mines again. They keep these guys as a backup force for losses. Oh, and here comes the artillery again. Okay, we'll put them there. Oh good. Oh boy. Oh bad. Very bad. I forgot about you guys. Oh my god. Give him a bandage. Or two. Oh, that was close. Still hammering that right side, but not attacking it. And down. Troops are falling under the map, making it kind of hard to click on them. Luckily, they don't seem to fall through, though. Oh, no. Here comes an attack. Well. More chaffies. And more Stuarts. Now a mix of both down the middle. Boy's going to need some supply here. Somebody drive that truck back down. I need that truck moved. American Mortar? Oh, look at that. Thought I heard an American Mortar. American 75mm howitzers. Oh, that's bad. Bad. And okay, we need to get that AT gun ammo ASAP. These seem to hold about maybe 20 AP rounds. All right, so I feel like we've now got like three, well, actually two AT guns on the left, like two on the right. Oh, we have more than that. All right, another good thing to prevent the enemy from shooting at our vehicles is to get out right away. They kind of see it as an inanimate object and won't shoot at it. We are resupplying. That AT gun can fire faster than it can resupply, so keep that in mind. And those howitzers are kind of not doing anything. We have a mortar on the right flank we do right here. Oh, that's really front line. Smaller mortar than the one on the left. This is an 8 centimeter on the right. One on the left is a big O 12 centimeter. 120 millimeter, brother. Big ass mortar. All right, well, the longer time we have between American attacks, the more time we get to resupply. Are they abandoning? Damn it. Where did they come from? Uh, I feel like this vehicle didn't get hit and they kind of just abandoned it. The other one they kind of just stupidly drove forward <laughs> rather than aiming it. Sometimes the AI is a bit derpy and I think that's okay.
because honestly, sometimes it simulates the confusion of war and whatnot, but also there are certain squad types like convict squads, you know, penal battalions that, of course, are just basically given a uniform and a rifle, minimal training, and that's about it. Well, we've somehow defended. Gotta be another attack. Or an objective to advance, of course. The Americans have slipped through the defenses of our neighboring sector. They swiftly snatched Terramont from under our noses. Now we're tasked with a counterattack. I order you to take back the town and bust any of our troops out of captivity immediately. Alright. Recapture the village of Terramont. Liberate the prisoners. Wow, so directly behind us. Prepare as many American vehicles as possible to help with the assault. Use mortars and AT guns to provide supporting fire. Well, that's going to be interesting. So yeah, he's exactly right. We can take our big O mortar now. <laughs> mortars here are going to make short work of this town and the American troops. So I think what we should do is hold a few troops here. In a oh, and we've got ourselves a Stug. Hello. Friendly forces from collapsing flanks have arrived. Excellent. Oh, and immediately open it up. Oh, and they brought supply with them. Cool. This is something I hadn't seen before, like a little supply trailer. All right, well, we need to quickly get everybody out of the vehicles, just in case. All right, well, we'll have the Stug uh, arc up here. I thought we were going to have to do this without armor support, but regardless, I still want to get a mortar probably over here to where this vehicle is, and then we'll just start cleaning up from the south, pushing north all along the road. Who the hell is that? Just a random ass rando? Okay, that's, yeah. This is, uh, remember, pre-release for me. So little things like that, the developers may be able to, I mean, someone can report that. Be like, yeah, in phase two of this mission, there's a random soldier. I'll just delete him. They'll, they'll go into the mission editor and quickly fix it. Not even a big deal. Not even mad. All right, guys, well, that's going to be it for our defense at the Battle of the Bulge, the Ardennes Offensive for the Germans. And now I guess we are going to go on the offensive. I'll see you next time for our second part episode on this one where we recapture the town. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for leaving a like. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for becoming members. Thanks for leaving a comment. I hope to see you all very soon.